If you would like to hear Night Dreams Talk Radio on your local radio station, let them know. Tell them to check out www.nightdreamstalkradio.com and thank you. The views, opinions, and representations expressed on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network and its website are those of the hosts, guests, and participants, and are not necessarily those of or endorsed by the network, its affiliated stations and broadcasts, the management, other hosts, or advertisers of the network. The shows found on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network can, but do not necessarily, promote any particular lifestyle, belief, religion, political affiliation, or other personal practice. These shows are for entertainment purposes only, and are not intended to treat, diagnose, and or claim any cure of disease or condition, or give any medical or legal advice. Night Dreams Talk Radio after dark wants to give a big shout out to all the truckers that listen to our show and check out our website at www.nightdreamstalkradio.com we updated it tonight uh, we're gonna have a great guest we're gonna have part two with terry lovelace on if you remember right he was the uh, in the air force with his buddy they went out camping well, they thought they were in a state park, but they were on federal land. And during the night, they had an encounter of a strange light. That light turned out to be a UFO. Then later during the night, they saw the aliens. He was abducted. And then, you know, what happened with, when he got back? And, well, I, I, I tell you, his commander at his base found out what happened. Next, you know, the uh, military police are investigating him. He'll be on the show here in about an hour. Well, we got the news coming up right now with Jane, so hang on. Night Dreams Talk Radio Network brings you the world paranormal news. 
with James Creechbaum. Now, the latest news. I'm James Creechbaum, and I'm going to share some of uh, the Earth news today. Well, here's a thing. Remember Gary McKinnon uh, from the UK? Uh, he accessed nearly 100 NASA and Department of Defense, including the Air Force Space Command. He faced extradition for 10 years after finding a picture of a UFO and a list of non-terrestrial officers. Now, sheltered are, sheltered are we from certain information? Has national security simply become an excuse to keep information concealed from the public to protect uh, corporate and government interest? Now, Gary was able to access these uh, computers in real time and view files on them. He found some startling pictures. One in particular was of a large cylindrical-shaped UFO hovering in space. In addition to a strange spreadsheet document with a list of non-terrestrial officers, presumably belonging to a publicity-acknowledged branch of the United States military operating in space, as well as fleet-to-fleet -fleet transfers of materials, whatever that means. <clears throat> the field of ufology has long been muddled with disinformation, campaigns, and bad journalism. And sometimes this journalism includes infiltration efforts by intelligent agencies themselves. This is clear given the fact that intelligent agencies have a direct relationship with journalists and mainstream media outlets, as there are no de declassified documents showing so, as there are declassified documents showing so. Operation Mockingbird is a great example, not to mention all the mainstream media journalists who have come out and said that mainstream media is directly influenced by intelligent agencies governments, and corporations. Now, on to the next thing. There was a moose in northwest Montana test positive for chronic wasting disease. Now, a moose in Montana has tested positive for chronic wasting disease for the first time. The finding expands the area. Wildlife managers believe, believe the, exist, the, the disease to exist. The moose was killed north of Troy, just a half a mile outside of the Libby CWD management zone, which spans a 10-mile radius around Libby. 30 white-tailed deer have tested positive for the CWD within the management zone since the disease was discovered this spring. CWD can infect deer, elk, and moose. White tails are easily impacted because they're a social animal. CWD can quickly spread through herds via contact, feces, and urine. But moose are relatively solitary animals. It is surprising. It's unfortunate news, but the silver lining is that moose are solitary animals. They don't socialize with deer or elk. They even don't socialize among themselves very often, says Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks spokesman. Um, now, the spokesman also said the means that the animals was less likely to have spread the prions or misfolded proteins that cause the fatal disease directly to other cervids. He says it's hard to say how this moose contacted the disease, but it is, but it could have occurred from sticking its nose in a deer carcass that was infected. It could have stuck its nose or shared a water source where there was a dead carcass in the water source, and that was carrying uh, prions that have CWD. Now, FWD, FWD hopes to collect samples from 400... 400 hunter harvested and trapped white-tailed deer inside the living management zone in order to understand the prevalence. FWD expects to have a full results early next year, which will guide future management actions. The agency is also sampling mule deer, elk, and moose taken in the management zone and is encouraging hunters harvesting animals nearby to voluntarily submit samples. Now, there is also a fresh case of bubonic plague that turned up in China. Now, it has been confirmed, actually, that China's Inner Mongolia reported a fresh confirmed case of bubonic plague on Sunday, despite an earlier declaration by the country's health officials that the risk of the outbreak was minimal. The health commission of the uh, autonomous region said a 55-year-old man was diagnosed with the disease after he ate wild rabbit meat on November 5th. Bubonic plague is the most common form of plague globally and can advance and spread to the lungs, 
which is more severe type called phenomic plague, according to the World Health Organization. The Inner Mon Mongolia case follows two that were confirmed earlier this month in Beijing. In both cases, the two patients from Inner Mongolia were quarantined in a facility in the capital after being diagnosed with pneumonic plague, health authorities said at the time. An Inner Mongolia Health Commission said it found no evidence so far to link the most recent case to the earlier two cases in Beijing. The patient in Inner Mongolia is now isolated and treated at a hospital in Unicoab, the health commission said. The total of 28 people who had close contact with the patient are now isolated and under observation, and the commission said there are no abnormal symptoms found in them. Outbreaks in China have been rare, but large parts of the northwestern city of Yunnan were sealed off in 2014 after a 38-year-old resident died of bubonic plague, known as Black Death in the Middle Ages and caused by the same bacterium as the pneumonic variant. Rodent populations have risen in Inner Mongolia after persistent droughts worsen the climate change. An area the size of the Netherlands has hit by a rat plague last summer, causing damages of 600 million yen or $86 million. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark with our host, Gary Anderson. And that is me. Here it is Monday. I can't wait to get uh, Terry Lovelace on here tonight to find out more. You know, what happened to him when they uh, actually investigated his story about being abducted by aliens. And you know what? We got some great guests coming on this week who actually been abducted numerous times. One is, well, Whitney, who wrote many books with Art Bell, like the Superstone uh, Storm. And what's the one you have behind you, uh, James? Say that, say that again. I didn't hear you. Whitney. My, my headphone. Oh, uh, Whitney Strieber. Yeah. yeah. What, what's the book you have behind you? Oh, The Communion. I had that book in 1988 when it came out. That was his first book. And I got to tell you, when I read that book, I it, it, it opened my eyes big time. I'd already been studying and researching UFOs and stuff for a few years, but that one there really, that really hit me, because I'll tell you, I was actually, you know, the thing, what really opened my eyes, I was actually living in upper state New York. Well, the, about the time that happened, I was up there in 86, 87, and I don't know, I think when it happened to him, but it, it really made me think, you know, I, it was like, wow. And they actually, when they abduct, abducted him, you know, they even went after him sexually, too, besides implanting him. So, I mean, he has a lot to say. He'll be on here in a few days to talk about it. And, you know, in the news today, the crazy news, one guy <laughs> got busted because, well, he, he actually killed somebody in Colorado and then put him in the basement in a block of oh. cement. Oh, yeah. I, I got to tell you, these people must not ever watch uh, any shows because that's the worst thing you can do. It feels all that DNA in there. My goodness. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah, but I guess it was a fresh uh, kill, too. I, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> you know, I, I watched a lot of shows. You know, I remember like um, the Twilight Zone and Outer Limits. There was one where a guy killed his wife and, and buried her in the basement, just dug a hole in the basement. That's before they, you know, they didn't have like cement basement floors. He, they had a dirt floor and he just dug a hole and you know, uh, bear, it was actually going to bury her, but then he fell in and then she buried him in it. <laughs> I guess that was karma uh, biting him in the butt, so to speak. There, yeah, wow. I, I missed that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, there's a small Canadian island that's so irate with the, the American authorities. Every bit of their mail has been open for the past year or more before they get it. Not by the Canadian post office, but by, well, the United States. Customs. Every bit of mail that goes to this small little island in Canada is being spied upon about, you know, with uh, our government. Oh, no kidding. Well, there must be something going There's got to be something going on there that we don't know about. Um, geez, usually when they do that, they're looking for somebody that's up to no good, I would think. Wow. Well, I guess a small island of Canadians, maybe they're not doing good. I don't know. But I, I, could, I could be really upset, you know. You're getting a love letter from your loved one or whatever, bills even. 
and you're male, 